Why should artists tell women stories with great care? Good. Ang daming response na nakuha namin dito for these sessions. Now, evidently, madaming interesado sa topic. I guess because uh, storytelling is universal to all. Kahit anong industriya, kahit anong profession, we tell stories. Our own and others. The challenge is and uh, what we want to problematize in this session is the ethics and accountability in telling the stories of others. In the case of uh, our speaker, si Miss Nikki, Luman, Miss Nikki Luna, mga kwento ng kababaihan yung kanyang nais na problemahin or problematize. Ano ba yung ethics dito? Ganyan. So, uh, excited na akong marinig yung kanyang insights on the topic. So, without further ado and to introduce uh, our speaker, let us welcome Dr. Natalie Africa, the Director of the UP Center for Women's and Gender Studies. Maraming salamat, Tez. Before I introduce Nikki, I'd like to welcome everyone. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Thank you all for being virtually here. I hope we are all safe and well amid the unrelenting COVID-19 pandemic. Welcome to session seven of our Conversations Through Art, a project of the University of the Philippines Center for Women's and Gender Studies. The Art Ventures and Advocacy Network, or Art Van, and more recently, the Feminist Media Lab. This is the seventh of a series of discussions and presentations of creative work. Conversations through art is interested in the various issues that arise from social inequalities as approached through art. It is an exploration of how various creative modes can be utilized to communicate, to give voice to the marginalized, to raise critical consciousness, and to empower and mobilize people to act towards societal transformation. We are very invested in this project because we believe in the power of the arts to promote social justice, to enhance well-being, quality of life, and human dignity, and human solidarity. At the UP Center for Women's and Gender Studies, we do research, conduct training, and do extension and outreach work. We are mindful that in striving for social justice, the cognitive and the affective must go hand in hand. Is there a better way to touch the heart and kindle the soul than through art? Through words, dance, movement, theater, music, film, and the visual art. We are so grateful and honored to have with us this afternoon the truly brilliant feminist artist, Nikki Luna, who has been volunteering to do a project with the UPCWGS despite living in another continent. It is the pandemic that made this possible. I, I don't think we would have thought about doing an online event with Nikki otherwise. And also because of the pandemic, we are so, so excited to have participants from all over the country. So uh, last year, Nikki completed her MA in Arts and Learning at Goldsmiths University of London. This afternoon, she will be presenting her MA thesis why should artists tell women's stories with great care? A part of her rich and fruitful journey as a true feminist artist, one who seamlessly melds art with advocacy and action. Nikki's impressive body of work on feminist art are living testaments to this. Why should artists tell women's stories with great care? The ethics of creating art about women should be no different from the feminist research ethics we adhere to when we produce knowledge about women. In feminist research, we place a premium on humility, honesty, accountability, and transparency. We construct knowledge that serves the interests of women and other marginalized groups and strive to transform oppressive and unequal social structures. We are mindful about reciprocity and make every effort to give back. We are also constantly self-reflexive, mindful of our own social positions along the axis of gender, class, ethnicity, disability, etc., and how these affect the entire research process. Those of us who adhere to femi the feminist standpoint recognize that knowledge is socially situated and that the social context of marginalized groups endow them with superior knowledge about their lives. All research that strives to improve their condition and position should begin with and make central their lived realities 
as they themselves express them. This is how feminist researchers tell women's stories with great care. It is our hope that all artists who produce work featuring women will consider and conform to these feminist research ethics in all the stories they tell. I wish all of us a most edifying afternoon. Thank you very much, Nikki. Magandang hapon at maraming salamat po sa lahat. Now, I will properly introduce Nikki. Nikki Luna is a graduate of the UP College of Fine Arts and Goldsmith, University of London. She's also an MA student of the Department of Women and Development Studies at UP Diliman, who needs to complete only <laughs> her thesis. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki was my student, mga at Nikki, I think 10 years ago, no ba, Nikki? Yes. <laughs> Nikki is known for her body of work, which primarily tackles social and political concerns with a feminist lens. It covers, or her work covers and is not limited to misogyny, women used as weapons in war, and women's human rights. With her passion for women and girl child rights in developing countries, Nikki remains committed in bringing attention to the plight of Filipino women, children, and the violations committed against them. Nikki brings art-focused activities to strengthen women and human rights standards, implement art healing and recovery programs for women and children victims of gender-based violence and those displaced in conflict zones. So friends, it's my pleasure and also an honor to introduce to you our guest this afternoon, Nikki Luna. Hi! Hello! Good um, afternoon in Manila. Uh, good morning, Gita. Um, I am so thrilled to be here since um, my heart belongs to WD and the Gender Women Studies um, Center. I've always been wanting to work with them, I mean, constantly, uh -huh. constantly. I say that's, that's how it is when you, you want to be part of women's lives. You always want to be connected and you always want to try to find ways how you can contribute more. So now, even with just sharing online, we're, I'm very, very happy. So today, I wanted to talk about um, the heart of my thesis. I'm calling it the heart of my thesis because it was very, very formal when I wrote it. Um, but I knew it from the start when I entered Goldsmith that I was going to tie up or marry my, the information that I have learned and uh, acquired all these years from WD. Because the learning from WD and in UPCGWS, it's constantly there. You're constantly improving learning and learning. So I knew from the start that I was going to tie it with my country and the women and my art. So the, the, the research thesis, why should artists tell women's stories with great care happened. And of course, with the help of another WD who actually graduated recently, <laughs> she Chang Jordan, she helped me articulate those words better. Uh, she was like my my other mentor. Aside from actually, I had other mentors, Filipino mentors. I really had to connect. So even if I had all these access to professors in Goldsmiths, I made sure I was in touch with the people that were really uh, were really on the ground from from my home country. So I wanted to share a few slides, just a little bit. So I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna assume everyone. Have, been, have seen my work. So uh, maybe Vince, hi, we can start with one of the slides. So this is, I'm just going to touch on what they are. So this is actually um, you, you know, Binibining Pilipinas crowns. Um, I made this back in 2014, uh, 2015, 2014, sorry. And it, maybe 2015, I don't remember. <laughs> but there are actual crowns that are made for Binibining Pilipinas, which I had made um, again, and the same makers. And the next slide, please, if you can see, um, you go under it and you will hear voices. 
So what I gathered here was I collected the winning questions of the past winners of Binibini Pilipinas. And those questions, because during this time, I was working in Agham Road in QC during the demolishing of the, the informal settlers um, communities there. I was really closely working with them during this time. It just so happened that um, I was able to use um, uh, my, 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 my conversations with them. And then I was able to, with consent, I asked permission if they would be willing or would want to participate in this exhibit by answering the winning questions their own way. So let's touch on that later, but that's an example of the work that I do. So it involves women. Next slide, please. Um, this is another work um, based on young girls. Actually, they were inspired um, by two young girls who I found very, very brave. Um, I met them back more than a decade ago in 2008 when I was working with a center that housed sexually abused girls. And they were 15 at the time I met them, but they been, they were locked up in a room for two years um, by cops, and this was their memory, the, the gun of the cop. So I made artwork about that. Next slide, please. Um, that's, that's the installation of the work. So 15, because they were 15 years old. Next slide, please. Um, this is uh, one of my recent 2017. Uh, 2016, where I I also worked in Fabelia Hospital with the women there. I was doing research, and at the same time, um, I was doing some community work by providing um, some workshop and providing newborn clothes um, uh, for the young mothers, all the mothers. I was able to come up with supplies for the newborn babies and mothers because Fabelia Hospital, I mean, it's, it's a public hospital, they, uh, they, they don't have much, they try to do their best. And so I was able to talk to a lot of young mothers there. And this work is actually maternal blood. So I, I asked permission from the women, the girls first, then the institution, if I could get the blood that was coming out during birthing. So yung na, yung kina, it, it's something that's thrown out of you. It's, it's, it's usually not needed anymore, but still I ask permission. Okay, um, I think that's the end. Is that correct? Um, of my brief. Uh, and lastly, sorry, this is CJ. This is CJ's dress, one of the extrajudicial killings um, victims um, in 2007, 2018, 2017. Um, she was 15 years old, she was pregnant, and she was shot several times. Um, and this is her actual dress that was given to me by her mother, which I made into a sculpture. So, um, given that, I just wanted to share a little bit of what I do as an artist. It obviously revolves around women, um, women's stories, and my, my work um, for these for, for the, my thesis in Goldsmith, um, the research question of this thesis, thesis, which relied heavily on establishing the problem. So what I wanted to do was, when I presented the thesis, I wanted to emphasize on how, um, because of, on why that question is so important through the construction of the problem that existed, uh, because it remains true today, especially now. Um, ethics and accountability on women have been ignored, um, neglected, and dismissed. Um, it was not really considered an issue or a problem to tell women's stories or, 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 or lives of women um, as if they were, you know, as if they didn't have feelings or they weren't human beings. They were disregarded often and denied of, of that existence of who they were. So um, I want to, and I want to start with why women. Um, 
So in, in my practice as an artist, women's concerns have fervently persisted in my work. In the beginning of my career as an artist, uh, my, my, I am, I, my art embodied my mom, my grandmother's narratives. That's how I started. I had witnessed the women in my family who were silenced and whose, whose lives um, were hindered, their voices weren't heard within my family. Not only by the men around them, um, but by society itself. And I was conditioned in the same way to think this was normal. Now, this led me to the path where I made a decision to focus on listening to women's stories. Um, since the male voice has always been given that platform, communicated throughout history, uh, we see this. It's, it's very persuasive, um, men's voices, um, academically, in art, in politics, you know. So, but women's stories, they were not always included. So, um, I wanted women's accounts presented. I want them validated. Um, I, I, and I, unlike men's stories, um, which are never, often, often, not doubted and often accepted. Um, they are the, the, it's been said, they are the standard of historical experience and excellence in thinking. So, so um, women in, in, in art, women's stories have been there. Let's go back to the first paintings found in, in one of the, recently the Mag Magu, Magura Cave, um, 8,000 8, BC, depicting lives of women, domestic to rituals to religious. The Egyptian sculptures of women workers doing daily chores. You know, they, they, women have been in, in, in art, you know, they've been subjects. Now, the lives of women have been featured even in museums, we see this. Women are often the muse or the subject. Um, so I want to discuss slowly. Um, so why should artists tell women's stories with great care? Some of the few artists who have featured or made a career out of women's stories in their art. Now, let's start with this painting that you can see. Um, it is actually the... Uh, can we go to the next slide after this, the one with the statue? Um, there. Now, this is one of the most popular works that you will see in museums, whether it's the Met or the Louvre, um, in books, everywhere. You will see this. This is the famous ballerina, Little Dancer, of Edgar Degas. Degas is... Um, this work, um, it's called Little Dancer. Um, her name, I want to say her name, um, is Marie Van Gogh. I'm not sure if I'm saying the last name. Um, perfectly um, but she was 14 years old and she's she's the subject of Dega she, she into this wax sculpture um, she had come from the poor one of the poorest areas in Paris um, and during this time the ballerinas in in Paris in the opera um, they they were subjected to to being prostituted. Um, Marie was 14 years old when she posed for Degas. Um, that's a very, very young age. Um, and obviously working at the opera as a professional ballerina to, to, to provide for her family or to make a living. Um, but she is one of the countless ballerinas in Degas works who are nameless. Um, 
I am going to show the preview slide. Now, there are many, many paintings of Degas that shows ballerinas in their tutus, young ballerinas performing on stage. Um, these unnamed women whose lives were exhibited rely on the artist's rendition to give the viewers a glimpse of their lives. Now, our artists such as Degas use these women's narratives as a certain, in, in this, in, in, in the Paris Opera Ballet, Degas took personal interest in dancers' um, working lives and their progression through the opera system because um, he had actual notebooks documenting his thoughts about them. Um, and he was so into the romantic era of the young girls, but also very, very curious. Curious in a, in, in a weird way of how badly they were treated, how badly they were paid and fed. These were young girls, as young as like 12, 13, 14, um, clinging on that image of working at the opera. And behind the scenes, there was something else that was going on. Um, the powerful male patrons could have access in the backstage with these girls to socialize and make propositions. So that 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 he he loved to document. Aside aside from this, um, of course, when you're that young, you're you're you know you don't really know what you're doing and you feel like you're obliged to entertain these old men. Now, um, this, this painting, particular painting that I wanted to share, if you can see this young girl on the side that, that's like leaning towards the wall, um, she's like holding onto this wall. There's a silhouette of a guy with a top hat. Um, that's his, that's his, um, interpretation of what he saw back then. This is the back room, the dressing room. So, so, so Dega here is a is a spectator. You know, he's a spectator. And and my why why am I picking on Dega? Because I think this is a perfect example of not knowing the stories of the subjects, uh, but it has made a career. Uh, it has been, it's what made Degas very popular, uh, his depictions of these beautiful ballerinas. But um, aside from this, Degas was also known to, be, he wanted to capture these girls. I don't have a slide about that, but um, he wanted to capture the bodies, the young bodies and their flexibility that he would, asked them to pose for him for hours and um, almost demanding them to, to in, 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 in positions to contort their bodies so that it's, it's really, really nice the way he would paint them. And he has been quoted to call them, quoted in, this is, this is you can find this in research books, that he's called them little monkey girls. Um, and he said, I have perhaps too often considered woman as an animal. He shared this with another painter, painter Pierre Georges Genois. So he, there's, there's a, you can see the, the, the misogynistic um, uh, mindset of how he saw the girls as objects. Um, and, and in the end, you know, the, the, the Marie, the dancer, the little dancer who was 14 years old, she was actually kicked out of the opera um, at, I think, 15 and then, or 16, and then uh, for being late. So she had to go, she, she ended up doing sex work. She went to a poorer area in France and none, no one knows what happened to her. And um, an artist like Dega, I mean, you know, he got what he, he wanted, um, but no one cares to know about this girl that um, contributed a lot to his career. So, um, 
uh, I know there's a, I mean there's a lot of appreciation when you look at Degas' work. Okay, if we talk about um, his 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 profoundly evocative hand and brilliant textural application of whatever scholars. Uh, but I guess with a feminist lens, uh, from a formal standpoint, as an artist, yes, you're good. But it, it, it narrows down to how did you appreciate or how much did you ignore the abuse these girls suffered, you know? So, okay, next slide. I want to discuss something more contemporary. Um, I'll discuss the work of Santiago Serra. He's a, he's a very well-known Spanish artist. And I have to say, when I, maybe over 10 years ago, I, I loved his work. But later on, you know, I, I lost touch of what he was doing. Um, and, and, but this, this work I knew. But then again, the, during that time, it was different. My, my outlook was different. So this work is titled 100 Centimeters Line Tattooed on Four People. The work consists of four prostituted women who are addicted to heroin. These women are offered the price of a shot of heroin in exchange to be tattooed with a line across their backs. That is the actual description at the Tate Gallery. Now, in, in the Tate interview with Shera, he, he is quoted that he wanted, for this work, um, he said, what I did was to find women in the places where they offer the body and to ask for the peace. They accepted and then when I get a person who knows how to make tattoos, it was not difficult. I know what I am talking about. People need money, people have to work, and I am looking for strong images to express this. That is cool. Now, now that they facilitated this work, um, they were the ones who looked for these, these women. Um, and a lot of Sierra's work actually you know, the, he looks for illegal immigrants, asylum seekers, prostituted women, drug addicts, urban poor, unemployed and homeless. That is the core of his work. Okay, so, you know, um, you can already see the, the, cho the choice of um, what he basically wants is to present these awful truths to a sheltered audience. You know, people who go to the museum who have that, that privilege to walk around there and do nothing or appreciate art, you know. But at the same time, he is looking for participants that are actual human beings who belong to the fringes of our society. Uh, now, um, he, and he loves the idea that it will be controversial because it is a slap in the face, especially for those who, who are in a different class. Uh, so when this work, I want you to think about him having, having been able to get consent because obviously the Tate facilitated an agreement with four women who were addicted to heroin who were willing to be displayed there and tattooed with a line on their backs. Now, what I want you to understand is um, I guess for an artist, wow, this is so cool, you know, this was 2004. But with a feminist lens, if you're talking about women's concerns, these women were higher than paid. You know that they are addicted to a substance they cannot even control. Um, now, the artist claims the women have given their consent. But, I mean, wouldn't you ask the question, if these women were in their right state of mind to actually give their consent. Given the background of these women who are used, they were in a vulnerable situation. So on the surface, it may seem that the women have made their decision on their own, um, given they have signed something, it's facilitated by an institution like Tate, but
Yes. Yes, I, I think um, yes. medyo nagka-technical problem si Nikki doon. So, paano ba? Sige. Okay, so, so, summer, so far... Summary. Uh, yes. Summary, <laughs> summary talaga. So, so far, yung discussion ni Nikki, uh, and I think about it, no, parang yung lumalabas, yung yung power relations between dun sa uh, subject and dun sa uh, artist na hindi natin nakikita na dun sa mga art of work, ah, sa mga uh, artwork lumalabas na merong discrepancy dun sa power between dun sa subject and dun sa artist nga. So, uh, same when we tell stories na kahit hindi, hindi, hindi art, uh, like kunyari, uh, sa, sa amin, yung sa work namin sa Feminist Media Lab, uh, it's important that uh, important yung uh, voices, yung pag uh, surface ng voices of women in a way na they are not exploited but rather uh, empowered sila. Oh, Sige. So yung ating, meron dito sa ating uh, uh, chat room na yung dinidiscuss daw kanina ay, uh, from uh, Marvi Bilisaran, Deputy Director ng uh, Center for Women's and Gender Studies, sabi niya uh, parang poverty porn daw yung dinidiscuss ni Nikki kanina na nandito na ulit siya. Okay, yeah. Nikki? <laughs> Where was I caught? Where was I Dun sa ito. Kay, ano, kay Santiago Serra. Oo. Uh, uh, na yung, uh, na sa, sa, ang tingin natin, uh, their decision to participate yes. uh, in the artwork is parang voluntary when in fact, uh, their conditions, parang they are, they were exploited, no? Dun sa yeah, pagpayan nila. When you think about it, they were really manipulated and dominated because they were not in their, the right position to make this decision. But given a powerful institution like the Tate, you know, facilitating this, it makes it badly. You know, it, it, it gives that justification it's okay. Um, and of course, given the, the power of a renowned artist such as Santiago Serra. So now let's go to the next slide, the Art Basel Open Exhibit Installation. Now, this is the most recent um, this was 2019. The title of the work is Open Secret. Um, this is the work of Andrea Bowers. And the images of the installation, um, it's, it's, it's a compilation of a, a, a monument of, of what was happening in Me Too, where all the women were sharing the details of their rape, assault, and calling out their perpetrators and the harassment and the allegations uh, against these these men or organizations or institutions so this was a big moment in the me too and an artist actually wanted to make a monumental piece by making a big wall as you can see and um, she she put their the women's reactions responses apologies, denials. So it's like a compilation of what's been reported. Now the controversy here that I want to discuss, this was in Art Basel, one of the biggest events that's always uh, awaited every, um, every two years. Uh, and, and she is represented by a, 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 a reputable gallery, a big gallery in New York. And, um, and she wanted to, to, to highlight, her intention was to highlight the survivors. Okay, now the thing is, so she made this. Now, there was, next slide, um, a, a tweet, a tweet from a, a woman, her, um, and she was one of the victims. Can we show the next slide, please? Uh, a tweet saying that, her, her, 
I mean, you can read it how fucking insane it is to find out that my beat of face and body are on display as an art for rich people to gawk at through a stranger's Instagram story. So apparently, the artist went through her Instagram stories, got. Ayo. Sige, parang nagkaka-problem si Nikki sa kanyang connection. So, uh, sige, to summarize din yung mga previous points na ginawa ni Nikki, no? Uh, parang the, the artist has so much control uh, with how the subjects are presented. Parang uh, if parang they have this point of view about the subjects, yun yung nangingibabaw. So, again, ibabalik ko dun sa parang uh, power uh, between, uh, parang itong manifestation of how uh, yung power ng artist is uh, represented or kung paano nagmamanifest siya dun sa uh, work of art na yung point of view na nakikita dun sa uh, output na na pinapalabas sa mga tao ay uh, yung point of view niya, di ba? And sa society natin na uh, okay, nandito na rin si Nikki. Nikki uh, uh, just to finish my point, sa society natin na uh, patriarchal yung uh, model or yung system. So, yung point of view ng mga kalalakihan, yung uh, nangingibabaw sa mga storya ng, ng mga kababaihan. Kunyari, lalaki yung... Uh, uh, dahil, I mean, kahit babae nga yung artist, eh, di ba? Dahil under tayo sa system ng patriarchy, minsan yung uh, point of view na napapakita natin is uh, uh, hindi pa rin beneficial to women. Okay, Nikki, back to you. Thank you. Um, so, can we go back to the previous slide? Um, so, what, what he actually used, or uh, what she actually used is this, actual Instagram stories, and she printed it, as you can see, it's a monumental piece. And she did put out the names of the accused, um, the perpetrators. But still, the point here is that she did not ask for consent from these women. And apparently, she has said, the artist has said that she did two years of research. Now, in, that, in those two years of research, um, more women actually came out calling her out in tweets. Um, about seven more girls saying that she never contacted them at all. So all these women asked to be their photos to be taken down and not be part of this. Now the problem here is Art Basel is a big, big art event. And this work was actually um, this work was actually Price at three hundred thousand um, dollars, all these printouts, and I, I, there's no reports on whether Andrea Bowers was gonna donate any proceeds or part of this to any movement uh, protecting women or making you know contributing. Um, now it's it's really we can say oh it's appropriation because. Or we can say that, oh, it's output put in public because it was on their Instagram. Now, that's not the point. The point is, these are stories. These are their stories. They shared it on their Instagram, even when it's public. But it's their stories. So, it's, it's, you have to remember, these are traumatic stories. Um, and it's re-victimization again. Now, from the police report, the medical, the media, the publicity, and then now an artist using their photos and their stories that will only benefit the, the artist, obviously, because there were no reports on what was going to happen with the $300,000 he was going to burn out of it. So, um, at least we, we discussed a few of those. Now, I wanted to say that in the ethical dilemma, if uh, it's it's it, the accountability and caring of the artists towards women, um, it's it's obviously been disregarded for centuries. Um, 
had her feelings, her thoughts are set aside for a bigger cause or bigger purpose, they say. Um, now, um, we, we look into these works of, of, of these three artists. Um, they were all paid. They all benefited. So, um, the question must reflect on the artist. Like, there must be an obligation to reflect. Um, we have that social responsibility, a conscience that we must submit ourselves to. So, um, who benefits who? So, uh, obviously, artists benefit a lot from these stories because, you know, you get known for these works. Um, I, I don't deny that. Even me, I get known to do women work. You know, women's stories in my work. Um, but, but we, we, we should always remember um, what is the agenda behind it or what is your responsibility once you share these stories of women. I mean, uh, like, like Bauer, she had two years researching on the project. I mean, I, 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 she could have reached out to all these women, even if it's a lot, because you know, she comes from a very good gallery. I'm sure they have a budget for that. Um, so I want to discuss what is care anyway. Um, in my research question, um, why should artists tell women's stories with great care? Now, I reference noddings in this research. And apologies for that, medyo iba yata yung connection. Nasa London yata si Nikki, di ba? Tama ba? She, she's in Spain right now. Ah, Nasa she's Spain. in Spain. Oo. Mas maganda pa yung internet natin pala dito sa uh -oh. Pilipinas <laughs> compared sa Spain. Mahiya naman sila, sinapop nila tayo, di ba? Isang hina ng internet nila. Okay, so merong mga questions dito. Uh, I wonder how the artist gathered content. If she did research, she didn't she have come across data privacy regulations were concerned. Is of utmost important. Alam, importance. Alam, may, ano, if I may answer the question. Alam ko kasi sa IG, parang naging issue na to dati kasi nga, hindi malinaw yung uh, terms of privacy ng mga uh, content na pinopost publicly. Yun. So, Nikki? Hi, sorry. I don't understand why it's yes down to spanish colonization agree ako dyan. anyway <laughs> um so um going back to the care the caring relations um uh, when we see artists filmmakers photographers display work about other people's sufferings kasi that's i mean photojournalists um or filmmakers they all often document, they have to document. It's their job to document injustice, conflict, um, sufferings. Um, now, we, when you, you have to know about care about women because then, I mean, you question the caring relations because you may care about the sufferings of the world, right? But do you actually care for the people, the subjects in that, in, the, in, that, in that image that you're taking, right? So, so, so cared for is learned in our homes, schools, institutions, um, next to families. Being cared for, we learn this and pass it on. Cared about, we learn this as we grow older. Caring for those we cannot care for, we cannot reach. So caring is instrumental in society. Um, it is the foundation of pedagogical activities. Um, the thinking and the practice of artists are critical in upholding why women's stories should be cared for and about. So caring is the underpinning for ethical decision making. So this, this leads us to recognize, now I want to highlight as well, um, 
uh, the artists that cared about and cared for women's stories. Um, I want to share the next slide of Lutrec. There, okay. Um, so, so uh, again, I want to go back to accountability. Um, I think we're leading to recognize how artists can be liberators when women's stories remain uncared for. Now, accountability, we have to remember that. We need to give, when you use women, when you use women's stories in your work, um, you still have to give a sense of agency, that the agency to women that you are featuring. So my attention, um, so, so let's go back to, to artists who actually cared for and about women. So this is one example if we had Dega during that time, this contemporary would be like Lutre, um, uh, also who worked in Paris, Lutre, Love painting and drawing. He is famous for brothel scenes of women, prostituted women again, sex work of women. But the very big difference with Dutre, Henry Toulouse Dutre, is that he depicted these women in their everyday lives as human beings. He refused to reduce these women as objects and subjects, uh, but instead he pursued to humanize these women. So what he tried to do is depict them, get um, preparing for bath. Or the next slide, please. Um, he he showed them as mundane as it combing their hair. He wanted to take out or go beyond the explicit nature of their work, which was sex work, um, and educate society at the same time that these women, uh, these women, they have lived experiences as human beings. They are not just commodities. They are not to be commodified. They are not they're not for sale. They, they, they're human beings trying to make a living in, in, in the most, the best that they can do or know. Um, so that's why I wanted to show that example. Now the next example would be, this is good, a good example for community work. Next slide, please. Especially artists um, and even those in community work who loves to do community workshops. Um, especially now, everyone just does community workshops. But I want to highlight the works of Pablo Eleguera and Suze, Suzanne Lazy, Lacy. Now, they love to do, their, their work is tied to social practice. Um, Suzanne Lazy is, uh, is actually a feminist. Pablo Eleguera is also very, very involved with communities and people. And this work is actually titled The School house in the bus. Now just, um, it's, it's the, the Pan-American unrest travel across the U.S. through the Pan-American highway. So it's, it's a lot of conflict. Um, now what, what I want you to see is that these two artists brought their work to the communities and they allowed the communities to make this decisions or to lead the workshops themselves. They did not ever dictate. Um, they made sure they were careful with their steps, meaning um, the schoolhouse and the bus, they made schoolhouses, next slide please, they made schoolhouses in, in every area. This is actually the inside of the bus um, where Susan Lacey's work, she made uh, she went, the bus went through different areas so that it does not penetrate other areas just like that. Like they respected each, each, each place, each um, tradition, each, each way of life for each community. But at the same time, because there were conflicts within those communities, she also wanted them to get to know each other and tie them to 
together, but without having to force them. So that's what Susan Lacey did. And at the same time, Pablo Alegera, he, he, he also, um, he, he relied so much on his research that he just documented it. And later on, he exhibited this in, in an actual exhibition because how do you exhibit really community work? You, you don't. So you just share. You just share so that you can inform more people of these communities that you work with. Um, next slide, please. So my, my, that's the bus where they were drawing each map of each area. Uh, next slide, please. Now, this is one of the works I'm going to talk about. This was in 2017, the enclave by um, Richard Moss. This was, where was he? Um, I think this was in, exhibited in, in Venice Biennale um, in the Irish Pavilion. Okay? Now, he documented the armed rebel groups of the Democratic Republic of Congo. He observed the, the soldiers, young soldiers, um, and I think he was, I'm not sure if he was sponsored by Kodak, that's why, that's why it had this psychedelic color. If you look at it, it's very, very beautiful. But then if you reach deep further, you know, within you and ask questions, what is the dialogue between the artists and the subjects? Um, he you have to remember um, these, this, can you move to the, sorry, can you move to the next slide, please? Um, this work was exhibited in, in the Irish Pavilion in 2013. And at the same time, these are stories of people, young children in conflict, young men in conflict, young women, um, who are widowed, raped. Um, these stories were being, these vid, these photos were being projected in galleries around the world, consumed by audiences that were predominantly white. Now you have to remember Richard Moss is also white. So you have to ask yourself the privileges that you have or the position you have when you do hold, when you actually hold a camera. That power, once you have it, and you place it in front of these people who are, when you think about, powerless in their situations. So, so that, that is um, the, the, the end of my sharing of, of the artist. Now, I want to talk about, um, ah, sorry there, sorry. Uh, um, can we go back there? there? The skull. I mean, this is a beautiful photo, again, of Richard Moss. But this is... Uh, a skull of someone who died. You know, it is, I, for, for me, it's beautiful if you're an artist, but at the same time, if you actually think about it, this could be anyone um, that someone loved and is dying in, in war, and it's a very good photo. But it's, it's a question that we must ask. How much, and this is exhibited all over the world. I mean, what is the relationship of that artist to these subjects once they end that, that photo, once they exhibit it? They lose touch. It's not like he goes to Congo. Uh, anyway, so I want to talk about valuing women's stories and the status quo. Um, if artists can practice caring for women's stories in, the, in their work, uh, this will definitely help to destabilize the status quo and combat repressive powers of society and institutions. Um, placing women's perspectives to be invaluable to an artist will emplace value in women's stories and their being. Um, as what I have learned in Bell Books, I love Bell Books, um, to resist being participants in exploiting, oppressing, and dominating women, mind and hearts, need to change. So we can talk about all these legal rules of, okay, Instagram is public. Um, oh, I got their consent. It's signed here. 
but it's within you. It's within your mind and heart to make those changes because you can get away with anything when you want to use women's stories. So as an artist, I attempt to confront difficult conversations and seek social justice through our work. We must never fail to heed accountability. Now, this question, I'm sure artists, I have, as an artist myself, I have this question. What is the claim when you want to push boundaries? Art for art's sake, diba? Like, So what's the fun in art if you don't push it, when you don't trigger force? You know, powerful art, it speaks for itself. Dapat, you don't explain it. So most, of, most often, a lot of people just use controversial subjects. Now, irrespective of the claim that art escapes any code of ethics and artists are free to push boundaries, no matter what the consequences in order to execute creations and masterpieces, um, I think artists should also start considering their personal ethical development and challenge their craft and artistic license by going around their creative concepts and avoid dismissing the ethical and value of preserving women's stories. Uh, I got that from Blackmore. You should read her. It's very good. I got that from Aileen Legas Ramirez. Uh, she's one of my best ever advisors. <laughs> okay, so another question that I'm sure you have in your mind is, do you need to identify as women in order to care for women's stories? No. The answer there is no. We must point back to the ethics of care. Um, I, I, I want to quote um, Severn Hushen. Sorry. The ethics of care considers care in the so-called relation of ontology, which replaces the distinctive attitude of me, other, subject, object. You must realize that you 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 have a res responsibility responsibility for the other. So you do not need to be you, you do not need to be have given birth. You don't need to be a mother. You do not even need to be a woman to cultivate that giving and forgiving to embody experiences, um, examination of how connected you can be to someone. You know, so even to a woman. So you, I, I'm not going to take that shit that you need to be a woman just to be able to connect to this. So, why should artists tell women's stories with great care? We're ending now. Um, from, I want to quote, not quote, but I want to refer to the Artificial Health book Roland, with Roland Barthes' opinion that authors, authorship of all kinds are continually indebted to others. When we delve into women's lives and their stories, why should artists feel answerable to the women they work with? Um, so I did an exhibit prior to this in London, uh, the mini exhibit that we have. And I recorded voices of women who were victims of intimate partner violence, bearing in mind to address um, the struggle um, of these women face, you know, that they continue to face Ayun, nawala na naman si Nikki. Ayan. Uh, before we uh, proceed or habang niyantay natin si Nikki, uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, na participant natin. Nandiyan si Professor Phoebe Beltran Almasan from the UP College of Education. She is the president of Artvan. Welcome, Ang Phoebe. Ayan. And sige. Ayan. Thank you daw. Uh, siguro at this point, I would like to uh, call on Shell Tongson. Present ba siya? Kasi parang I want to uh, ask about yes, her insights dun sa discussion namin so far. Actually, plinaan ako na to kasi <laughs> laging nakawala si Nikki. So, yan. So, magpapa-insight na tayo sa ating mga participants. Oh. Yes. Uh, Nikki, 
that's a very interesting discussion, no? And uh, it's so interesting that she is able to relate it to art, no? Ako naman di ako artist, but what I'm saying is that the values, no, the feminist values are very, very important in anything that you do. So yung mga sinasabi ni Nikki na we're not supposed to be exploitative. The artists, they earned so much from all these exhibits. They they made you no know, this this art pieces. Uh, they made this you no. Know, uh, they, they made these artists to be popular all over the world. So, on my end, that's the very first thing that I've learned from feminist research. My feminist research teacher was teacher Nazi Versailles, and she happens to be my dissertation advisor. Sorry, di ko talaga yon pwede hindi sa sabihin parate because that's the first thing that I've learned from her. Uh, na oh na magkolekt ako ng bosses ng narratives ng mga babae pero after noon magkaharon ako ng dissertation magkaharon ako ng doctoral degree so ang unang-una ko iisipin doon may exploit ko ba sila paano ko ba ito gagawin ko own sila so from the very beginning i realized that the narratives of women in my paper are not mine they belong to the to, to the women and I'm just a storyteller and then before I even uh, you know uh, have my dissertation and my uh, articles published I show them a copy and ask them is this how you want your story to be told is this how you want people to know about you do you want me to revise so in that manner I'm not only there to have power a person with a privilege, uh, and, and I would like to ensure that they were never ever exploited in my process of writing about their story. And I would really like to th thank uh, Nikki for emphasizing that, that even in everything that you do, whether you're a researcher, a teacher, or an artist, no, you really have to ensure and to take care of women and their stories. Yon. Matutuwa ako sa mga sinabi mo, Nikki, sa araw na ito. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chell. Ano ko nag- Wait. Okay, so I'm answering the question. Why should artists tell women's stories with great care? Um, so I want to go back to Blackmore. I want to share this book, Misrepresenting Others, Ethical Dilemmas of Socially Engaged Art Practice. Um, um, she said here that the relationship is threefold. It is for the individuals, for the viewers, and the artist herself. Now, I contemplated on these last thoughts as an artist and a woman. I am both a woman and an artist. I am bound to create, but I am aware I have an obligation to other women as well. I am indebted as much as any artist. The artist owes the women for entrusting their truths their voices being molded and formed into tangible narratives. Now, that was my only job. I am just merely a medium or a vehicle to women's voices. Um, I'd like to think it's in solidarity. The space is democratic and both do not claim the other, but know they are of equal importance. That is what I learned. And, and of course, the the stories, if you answer this, it's pretty simple. Why should artists tell women's stories with great care? Because it remains that the story belongs to these women. It belongs to them. It is compelling to re-examine the power, effect, and contribution of art in telling women's stories for others and for every woman. In... Um, it moves... Because, you know, it's, it's the influence of the, you have for the people and the women themselves. It moves towards transformation for all um, through care. Um, you are a, I, 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 I need to quote Chang Jordan. Um, you know, to, because from Anutwin, from Paolo Fem. So... You can reshape oppressive realities. And that's how I see art. Now, art has a power because this shapes 
our society, our culture, it's something that will be remembered in history, even when we're long gone. I mean, that's why, that's the whole point of going to museums, looking at pictures, because you realize there was war during this time, there was famine, there was this story. You know, it, it documents visually that sometimes you don't need research, you don't need text for it. Now that is powerful. And, and now what the artist gets all that, that acknowledgement, their recognition, wow, that's a powerful work. But we should never forget the people behind it. And usually, there's a lot of women in these stories in every art. So, so I'd like to see that, I'd like to think women's one silent stories can spark a revolution because women's stories is every woman's story. Thank you. <laughs> I'm finished. Do slides, Nikki? Ay, meron pa akong slide. Oh. Yes, and actually, I just wanted to share this for, you know, for those who are not familiar with my work. Um, these are, when you think about it, this, I mean, when I did my MA in London, I started thinking about my past works because, like, this work, this is a pineapple. I was working closely with the women farmers in Mindanao and a lot of them would tell me that buti pa yung it was all about their back, their vertebrae and I remember the Kentex workers and all these factory workers naalala ko in WD over 10 years ago with Blue Star you know all the factory women that I have met in their unions they share their stories they're always nakapuba kasi nga like naka, naka Naka, naka tungo, working, you're just working. Your vertebrae is carrying all that. I mean, it's, it's, it's positioned that way. Now, the vertebrae is connected to your pelvis. And I realized that women laborers, whether you're a factory worker or a farmer, um, it's connected to your pelvis, your back. And I wanted to make a pineapple because this was so symbolical in Mindanao during the time um, when I was working closely with them. And this is the, the sickle, yung, yung ginagano sa farm, yung that. And I painted it gold. So this was, I changed it into a new one. I bought this from them. And then I made a pineapple out of the vertebrae of an actual woman who was buried her bones were thrown in Marikina somewhere because she couldn't pay for her tomb, the 300 pesos a month. So they store it in this big, big, big um, place where they store it in sacks. Okay. And then they store it in sacks and they, they put all the bones there. And then that's what I did. So I got a sack with a woman laborer and I put her back, I borrowed her bones, but I put her back so that she has a puntod ulit. But I wanted to show this, so, so there. So next slide. So I was questioning my work, next slide. Ah, this was the story of the many, this is a symbolical piece only because this is, um, there were stories of rape of infants, four month old baby um, in Cebu, I think. And of course, they're eight month old, so one year old. And I had access to these people who could lend me a dress of the baby. Then I chose to use my own daughter's dress when she was newborn because that's how I could relate to it. I think it would, it would have been too painful for the families to have that, the dress again, parang frozen in time through a sculpture to be remembered that way because I questioned myself that time if it would be good to actually use their actual baby clothes even when they were offering it to me. Um, I didn't want to use it. Uh, so I just used my own because that's how I could relate to it. Um, the fear for my own children. Next slide, please. So this is 
uh, work of mine. It's 5,000 bullets. Uh, I think Sinamam Nazi were able to go to this work. Um, I, I did work with women here and um, I was so affected because during the EJK uh, at the height of it in 2016, it was a lot of them were women. They were widows. They were the ones from Alex Arum, Arumpak. She was documenting it um, from Aswang. Um, she was documenting this. I borrowed one of her still um, um, shots, which was also displayed here because I wanted to show uh, how women artists were working on this and how they were also highlighting the women because the woman that, that, that was sweeping off um, the blood of her husband out on the street so these are women's stories. So the next slide, please. Um, there, that's a big piece. It's super big, like 60 feet. Okay. The next slide. Uh, this is the, this was over a decade ago when I was working in that center for young girls, 18 years and below. And they started sharing because you know i've been working there for two years straight so they were sharing so many things to me sometimes they would give me personal things and at one point they shared to me when they were they experienced gender-based violence which was like sexual assault or rape they shared how they cope with it and, and i actually had all these these objects they gave to me it was a button it was a ribbon it was a uh, uh, and I enclosed them in a soap. So I wanted to pass it on to the viewer. So this was a um, uh, interactive piece. Next slide, please, where you pick a soap, you wash it in a basin, um, your hand. Next slide, please. And then you, there's a, there's a feeling of cleaning, cleansing, but also transfer because most often the not people could never relate to sexual assault. Um, like I said, women are often doubted. Um, you have to prove it to great length. Um, so um, this was one of those works. Um, I guess um, you can find more about my work online in my website or online. And I think it's, it would be nice to open the questions um, I'd like to have, I, I'd be, it'll be more fun for me to have a conversation with those who invested their time with me today. <laughs> yeah, siguro, ano, I think we can entertain uh, at least five questions from our audience. Now, siguro, uh, we'd like to invite everyone to post their questions on the chat room. May mga nag, uh, may mga nag post na kanina ng question nila. Nikki? Babasahin ko na lang yung question. May mga sure. nagpost na kanina na question. Okay. Uh, in the Philippine art scene, have there ever been artists who have been irresponsible about telling women's stories? If so, how did the art how did the art uh, world respond? How can the Philippine art scene hold artists accountable to encourage them to be responsible when it comes to telling women's stories? That's from Jasmine. It's very hard because I am... I have to say, I have very, I very, I find it very challenging uh, to change hearts and minds, even if you try to just inform them um, by having to reference or give examples. I, I really try to inform them, but the challenge is, you know, sometimes when you confront a perpetrator and they happen to be in a big circle a big established circle of male boys, boys artist club. There's a lot of, um, it will be very challenging. You will be attacked. Um, sometimes galleries won't work with you. Um, most often than not, they keep silent. You know, they just don't want to touch that subject. Um, but I think I've been taught by a lot of leftist friends that the point of having to change minds and hearts is to always be patient, to never give up in trying to inform people because one day they will realize this. Um, so as much as I want to fight everyone, 
because I know a lot of these people. I do in my own way. Like, you know, when when I know of a perpetrator or another artist, number one, I don't talk to them. I don't give them that platform that they can actually talk to me. Um, I don't entertain them even if they go through friends and collectors. Okay? And, and to segue na, oh, Nikki, can, can he talk to you and explain his side? No. I won't give him that chance to lie. And second, what I do is I call them out. I don't call them out in public. Ako sisigawan ko sila. Hindi naman ganon unless unprovoked. Unless they do that first. Um, which has never happened yet. Usually they stay away. Away from my way. <laughs> but I do call them out. I do call them out. And because that is the only power you have. When you can take away that privilege that they can talk to you in a civilized way as if nothing happened. Mm-hmm. I hate that. I hate that appearance. Oh, everything's okay. And parade is okay. Diba? Ginapang mo yung babae, diba? Habang tulog. Alam mo, so, ano yan, very, di ba, ang daming, uh, sa, sa film kasi yung background ko, yung ang daming filmmakers, parang ano din siya eh, dile Marina, ang daming filmmakers ng mga abusers, pero parang paano daw yung work nila? I mean, pwede mo pa bang, kunyari, if you're a feminist, pwede mo pa bang i-enjoy yung work ni Woody Allen, di ba, ni Roman Polanski? <laughs> <laughs> so, ano yung... I know what you mean. I know what uh-uh. you mean. I've had so many encounters with this. I mean, at one forum, this is public, recorded, one woman would say, di ba ang ganda ng work niya? You can't deny it. It's really good. I couldn't, I couldn't help but raise my hand. I'm really so passionate that it is the only thing that you can take away. You know, if these institutions such as galleries, organizations, can take that away from them for being acknowledged for their work, because, I mean, wouldn't you be affected that the person behind this is actually a criminal? Because I'm not talking about men or, or artists who are just obnoxious, who's an alcoholic, but he's just a menace to himself, okay? I'm talking about sexual assault, okay? Or exploitation, I mean, or sexual assault. Let's say, I'm talking about particularly sexual assault or rape. How can you be friends with anyone who can rape? How can you even admire that word? I mean, Michael Jackson, diba? It's, it's, I, I mean, even Woody Allen, just a thought. Now, now, I've also had this discussion. I have a different research on this, which I also presented in, in Goldsmiths. And a lot of the artists, I'm not telling you to take down every work in every museum in the world, okay? Okay. Ayun. Hintayin natin si Nikki, no? Sige. Ah, uh, meron lang ditong magagandang uh, comments from our participants na gusto kong i-highlight kasi uh, ang galing, ang ganda nila. Sabi ni Joanne Cabale, consent is not the end. Being responsible how a subject is presented is more important. It should include dignity and consideration for the women presented in art. It should also include uh, it should include how they want to be presented, giving voice to women. No? Communication between the artists and the women has to be completed in the art. Yeah. Sige, wala pa rin si Nikki. Siguro we can uh, entertain more questions. Uh, post lang kayo. Sige. Uh, from A.L. Silva, strength in numbers when confronting misogynistic artists banned with uh, female and other marginalized, marginalized group, art critics, reviewers, writers. Uh, do more of the seminars for the public exposure. I wonder, pagbalik ni Nikki, parang gusto ko siyang tanungin kung ano yung naging impact ng Me Too movement dun sa art world. Ayan, Nikki. <laughs> I had to check the, no, no, I want, what I want you to do in museums is actually, you want to keep that work, fine, diba? But let's talk about how, let's also not, in those text cards that you have, let's talk about how you were a bad, like, how you were a violent man, you know? How you, man, how, how uh, all this information of how celebrated you are, 
let's not skip the bad sides because you also made art about that. So it's just acknowledging. So you want to, you, you want to keep him, uh, these, these other men who made art, tapos they had in, in, they were in sexual relationships with their own daughters or sisters, I forget. It's Eric Dial in, in the UK. If you want to do that, include that. Because he made sculptures that were like penis-like na dolls, and that's what he would give his daughter. So the daughter would rub it. And that's like shown everywhere. He, he, even as a retrospective. Why didn't you put that on the side? <laughs> that he was accused of this and that. That he had a sexual relationship. He was raping his own daughter. So how can, can you please just put that? But you know how to take it down? Put that information. Alleged, however you want to put it, put it there. Art institutions should also be responsible, no? In telling yes. women's stories and the artists that tell women's stories. Art institutions, curators, organizers, professors, right? They, they don't want to talk about it, especially if someone, it's someone they know, they adore. Um, and most of the time, they don't really care about women. Diba? I mean, well, in the art scene, it's really celebrated yeah. artists. Moving on, uh, Nikki, there's a question. <laughs> there's a question <laughs> here <laughs> about uh, trans women. Trans women naman, no? Uh, paano ma-include yung trans women, the stories of trans women in uh, telling the stories of women in general sa art? Okay, naghang ulit si Nikki. Ayan. Uh, Miss uh, uh, Ledesma from our participants, sinagot niya yung uh, question ko kanina dapat kay Nikki about the impact of, of Me Too movement sa uh, art community. Sabi niya, some museums have responded to the Me Too movement by highlighting cases or accusations of harassment or assault like uh, chalk clothes in the National Gallery and DC in the artist bio or credits next to the work. Ah, yung parang sinabi din ni Nikki kanina. Interesting. Okay. Sige, siguro pag uh, habang wala si Nikki, we can, dahil uh, 5.30 yung ating time. Tama ba? Five, hanggang 5.30 lang yung uh, session natin for today. Ito na siya. Nikki? I think cut. I'm so sorry. Ayun. Uh, Marie, may question dito about how to include, yung inclusivity ng uh, inclusi including uh, including, okay. including the uh, stories of trans women. In telling yeah. the stories of women. Parang ha paano nangyayari yun uh, sa ngayon? Actually, wala pa akong Although he, here in Spain, the friends that I've actually um, gained are from collectives of trans um, women. Uh, and, and, but, but the topics that we talk about are colonization, um, moral labor, so and being able to stay here because they're immigrants as well. Um, but in in the Philippines, wala pa kasi ako masyado na encounter. But I think it's the same way. The same way that you treat women's stories is the way, same way you treat trans women's stories. The same way you treat human being stories. Diba? Ang pinapoint ko lang kasi is when it comes to women, we're really put in a second, um, we're treated like second class. Like our, I can't even say that eh, because it's dismissed nga. So you include it. So if you include it, that's a big, that's a big thing. Crediting, acknowledging, um, not taking away their place, you know, uh, not because they're women, but because they, they have every right, you know, to, to be heard, to have that voice. Because when you see, let's say, someone who is not 
privileged or someone impoverished and you use them as subjects, it's so easy to grab their story. Diba? Sabi mo, pakainin mo lang siya. Or ganyan. Sometimes you don't even do that. Because sometimes they're just so happy that someone is talking to them. But the thing is, when you talk to them, iiwanan mo siya once you get your point. Once you get that good line, you get that good picture, you leave them. And that's what they don't understand. Hindi mo siya babalikan. Um, hindi mo sila kakamustahin. Hindi mo hindi kakahalap ng paraan paan sila matulungan in some way. That I don't understand. And I guess that's also, it's very hard because these are jobs that we're talking about. I guess this is a job for journalists, photographers, filmmakers. It's their job to document. But can we go beyond that? And artists kasi, artists, hindi sila anthropologists. Ang artist mm-hmm. has that free thing in their head that I can get away with it. I'm an artist. I can push the limits. Diba? For art's sake. So that's a that's a problem. That's why I'm really emphasizing as artists, you must question. Kasi okay, yan yung you should wala reconceptualize ka talaga yung role ng artists and their responsibilities to towards their subjects. No? Yes, but that's gonna be such a long, long process because you can't even you know it's very very challenging to even like include women artists, women stories. I mean. So challenging. So challenging. Another question. Uh, when you create art, do you think about your audience? Problematize how, for example, you can interest the men or the unconverted? Or do you speak to women primarily? Kumbaga, yung work mo ba is primarily meant for women? Or do you want to also brainwash bar, parang inspire it's, other it's, women to read, uh, men and others to rethink how they think about women? It's not made for it's, it's about women, but it's not just made for women. Especially, it is made for all. It's made for men and those who are uninformed about women's concerns and issues. Yan yung gusto kong target. Kasi women, we know our struggles, right? Sometimes it's not, it's not exactly the same, but we feel it. You know, in different facts that we may have, we know it. But men... And those who are uninformed, that's what you need. Those are the people you need to touch. And usually, in my other works especially, I get more gratification when a guy would often come up to me and say, Nikki, my God, it hurt me. Like, okay, that's a success for me because ikaw yung pinapatamaan ko dito. You should start thinking your position. Where do you stand? Right? That's, that's, that's the whole point of this. It's not just for women because we need men to be our co-resistors um, in, 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 in making a better place for us, you know, and, and, and finding that place for us and taking the space that we must have because they're taking all of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> lahat na lang. Kayo na lang. <laughs> Ayun. <laughs> Nikki, curious ako. Uh, kamusta yung reception dun sa thesis mo? Meron bang parang mga um, criticism or parang mga negative uh, feelings uh, toward your <laughs> nung <laughs> pre-present mo siya? Tayo for my thesis. <laughs> no, my problem during my thesis was sometimes um, because they're, you know, I come from a developing country. And when I first started proposing women's issues, I was told, I was told, oh, Nikki, this may be a problem from your country, but this isn't a problem here anymore. I was talking about gender-based violence. And I was like, oh, really now? So what I did was do an actual research. And I found that UK is one of the highest. So you, those were my problems that I couldn't, it was, it was hard to connect um, sometimes. Um, and it was challenging to find ways so that they understood what I was trying to say. Because uh, oh, that's what I forgot. I wanted to share the photo of the work. Um, 
of my actual work. Because what I did in my thesis was I collected all these, um, I collected all these um, objects. Um, play, uh, no, ganito. I had a prompt. My prompt was, um, did you, um, did, but you enjoyed raping me. Because that was an actual text of a woman who, who said that, who said that to her intimate partner. And she experienced that. Now, I wanted that prompt to, I sent it to other artists and curators to react to it visually. And they were, they were able to mail it back to me. So what I exhibited was in a glass case, all their reaction and responses to that prompt. That's what I did. Um, and, 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 and I was, I, the, the point of that was, I didn't just collect randomly. I, I researched on the black market on how, how women, how girls were trafficked. So yung black market na yun, yung from organs to, from organs to bodies. Because, you know, organs are your insides. And that's how I saw th truths or women's stories. They're from your insides. And so, but pero parang binibenta siya in the black market. So, I, I made a map of where, what countries they would pass. And those were the countries where I targeted my artists and curators to respond. So, that was also a problem because when I presented that, they were asking, someone asked me, um, what is, I'm sorry, you lost me there. What is the black market? <laughs> so, masakit yun sa akin because I was like, oh my God. Uh, so, so, that's why I miss WD so much. <laughs> iba yung, ibang, ibang, iba, mas, masasabi mo ba na ibang iba yung konteksto nila? sa London, sa First World County, dito sa Pinanggalingan, dito sa Philippines. So parang may, may mayroon talagang parang difference sa uh, uh, understanding of what you're trying to to do or to say. It's, it's um, I, I'm sure, you know, I learned so much then because I learned so much about ethics. They're so big on that. And that's what I really learned to value. Um, accountability, um, authorship, it's, it's crediting, it's, I mean, I never had to write so much bibliography and referencing and Harvard referencing files. It's, it's, it's really valuing where it came from. And that's what I learned from them. And also reflection, marami ako natutunan because reflection is, is, is very, very useful to, to an artist because you need to you need to step back you know i think any anyone whether you're a photographer or filmmaker you also need to you need to step back on on what on what you you might be looking at and you also have to refocus on yourself as a woman especially if you're a woman because we women we can also get so invested with other women's stories and you need to take a step back Ayun. Very important yun, no? I mean, uh, ano siya ngayon? Parang uh, napapag-usapan na, kunyari, if you're a development worker or you're an artist or you're dealing with uh, parang mga, ta uh, mga uh, women's narratives na medyo mabigat, yung, uh, yung value of care dun din sa gumagawa. Parang you, you have to, parang de yung mga debriefing, di ba? Importante rin yan sa mga storytellers. So, so dun pumapasok yung uh, feminist value of care at in both ends sa uh, sa storyteller and then yung sa subjects yun Sige. yes so i think uh, uh, time na ano na natin uh, hanggang 5:30 lang yung ating session for uh, for today if uh, you have any more questions to Nikki pwede ka ba nilang i-email Nikki yes yes okay. can you give us your ano uh, email address so our participants Please. can send you an email. You can send me an email at studio at nikkiluna.com uh, or you can easily message me. 
<laughs> on Facebook. On Facebook, yan. Please find yeah. uh, Nikki Luna's Facebook page. To it's give... Uh, yan. It, Any... It, 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 yeah. Any last uh last word? <laughs> May message ka ba ni Kobe for <laughs> very ominous eh, no last words. <laughs> message to our participants before we uh, give the floor to uh, Professor Amos Malangi, who will give us a synthesis of uh, the discussion. I think it's um again thank you so much for spending this afternoon with me. Um, I, I wanted to share, but I just. I've been, I've been trying to create um, women praxis art. Yan din natutunan ko sa UK, praxis, so much. So I created this website where you care about reframing um, women's lives into the framework of your, whatever you do as an artist, like it's part of you. You, think, you don't have to make work about it, but it's part of you. Like, People have to start thinking that being a woman and the way you live as a woman, it's part, it should be part of your framework in your making process. You know, it should, should be considered. So you care about it. Number two, create. I'm trying to create a... <laughs> I don't, no. that's, see, that's, that's, that's reframing. <laughs> you create um, an archive. I want to create a digital archive of Filipino women artists that have contributed in reshaping or shaping um, arts. So writing, film, photography, visual. I, I've been trying to work on that. So whether it's a big artist, a small artist, whatever you want to call it, they have contributed. And most of the time, you don't even know them. You don't even know them. So that's what I'm busy uh, about. So sana, I'll share it with you so maybe that's something that we can start to value and look into um, contributions of artists and at the same time framework of women in any work, actually not just mm -hmm. arts, diba? even in the office, as teachers, diba? that's, that's the problem and they use it against us instead of working with us. Lang. Yung last words ko, Angus. <laughs> Bago-bagay din siya. Ganun talaga ang pang mga feminist passion nito. Para oh, ma-inspire yung mga right. feminist. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, Nikki. And uh, we hope hindi lang ito yung uh, parang masundan pa yung conversations with you. And no love. Yes. Ha? Ito, ito na ulit. Wala ako. Oh, okay. okay na ulit. May supporting okay. yun. Sana, ano, kapag may, pag, pag lumabas na yung project na yan, sana parang we can all, we can it's, do this again to talk about it, ha? Yes, yes, yes. Well, when I collect mm. more, actually, I collected mm. a few responses from artists and I'm gonna share them. I'm working with it with si Faye Kura. Hi, Faye! Akintala! <laughs> She's there! <laughs> Thank you, and of course, Faye. Hi. Mga advisor ko sila, Twyla and Jam. May forever Ay, advisor. Twyla kanina. Sige, <laughs> okay, may five days ka pala. May <laughs> mga pabate. Si Aileen. Yan. Because they're the ones who've been there eh. Sila pa yung mas naging thesis advisor. <laughs> Community of women at work. Yan. Thank you, Nikki. Let's call Thank on... You so uh, Thank you. Thank you. Let's call on uh, Professor Amos Manlang Manlangit to give us a synthesis of the discussion. Okay. Amos. Thank you, Thank thank you, you Amos. Much. Yes, thank you, Nikki. Yes, can you hear me clearly po? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So the Conversations Through Art you know, is a series of discussions that began in 2019. An initiative by artist advocates, advocacy builders, rights holders, social workers, and from a wide range of professions to collectively promote arts for good and social change. The roadmap came about when I, as an inclusive arts advocate, special education practitioner, and College of Fine Arts faculty, met with UTCWGS Director Natalie Africa Perseles and her team to explore the potential of the CTA. I then discussed this with my artist platform, the Art Ventures and Advocacy Network, or ARTMAN, under our president, President 
uh, Professor P.D. Dalchon Almazan at the College of Education who supported this vision. Of course, the Families Media Lab, founded by our very gracious host, Des Cruz, strengthens this partnership the more. And together, we embark on a mission of inviting local and international creatives to share their work and advocacies related to gender and development, inclusion, diversity, social justice, and social equity, among others. In the six previous installments, speakers that we call storytellers included movers from the Philippines, Singapore, the United States, and uh, from other places. Since 2019, we've had Lynn Raman from Singapore and Maria Ramondes from Galicia for literary expression, Ea Torado and Rina Angela Corpus for dance and movement, Sigrid Andrea Bernardo, Antoinette Haraone, and Sam Lee for film, and your story for visual arts. Nikki Luna is featured as her seventh speaker and storyteller in this series. So the sheer visual impact of her works can indeed move people in multitudes. The message cuts across the mind, the heart, and the soul. She uses symbolism, material, and process to create such powerful, powerful products. And it becomes more profound as it goes into an area of study, as far reaching as studying in the UK and Europe to reach the depths of her soul. But how does she rise from her anchor of the academe? She goes into full circle when it comes out from its nest as a thesis topic and reaches more people like what we are discussing today. Her material inspires women and men who want to tell their stories and reaches the women and men who listen to these stories through art. Indeed, it plays a role in the building of history, especially when the message has so much teeth. Its sharpness pierces through and facilitates the healing, restoration, growth, and transformation of society. The art that was shown by Nikki shows beauty in all forms, the pretty, the ideal, the grotesque, the horror, the realistic, the anger, because that is what beauty is really about. As Nikki said, when it triggers, it is beautiful. When you bring the truth into the open, it gives a voice to the marginalized. We have to let people talk through art. But of course, when we talk, we tell it with the responsibility. Because at the end of that day, the person who speaks is accountable for his or her message. And as Professor Chel Chong also said, you cannot exploit one party to favor the other. That is what today's CTA is all about. By talking about things in a responsible way and considering many factors in order to be inclusive and universal. Today, we are part of that history in the making especially in this time of pandemic when virtual communication has exponentially leaked and increased. We have to maximize it, but in harnessing it in this new normal, let us be accountable. To close, the world is now listening in a different way. It taps into various creative modalities of visual arts, music, literature, dance, and creative drama to encourage people to speak, express, and impart something of themselves in an enriched form and aesthetic manner. Realize how these expressive arts impact on the individual, organizational, or sectoral levels. And in this time of crisis, art plays an urgent and essential role in nurturing the heart of a society that is breaking apart. Therefore, art should have strong and inclusive platform. Despite the differences in creative modalities, audiences, and different points of view that we have, we have to unite to show that art is by everyone and is for everyone. So please, I, we invite you to like the UTCWGS Art Band and Feminist Media, Media Lab Facebook pages to know more about what we do. But I would like to bring the good news that we are now on the way to constructing our CTA Online Publication and Communications Hub, which will feature more artists making a difference in the world. You will get to see the past seven feature artists, including me, in the site as well. Thank you to everyone, to all our partners, storytellers, and everyone else who are in this conversation. Let us keep the talks flowing and this mission going. Congratulations, Nikki. Thank you, Thank you. Amos. Thank you, Prof. Amos. Um, Thank you. Before